So I'm going to tell the story about, uh, I work on Bloomberg Law. It's a big, large legal research platform. The story actually started a year ago down in Florida. Um, so me and some fellow colleagues, we were at ViewConf. We were kind of playing around with Vue, kind of considering it. Um, and within the last year, we basically migrated our very large legacy application to Vue. Um, so I'm going to kind of tell that story. Some of the things we learned along the way, uh, some of the things we think would be useful for the community to kind of, kind of get involved in. So here we go. Here goes nothing. Um, so what did we do? We started with a classic Rails monolith. We recently had a 10-year birthday for that application. That should set up a lot of alarm bells, right? We had a really messy front end. We had gone through three different redesigns. We decided to use Polymer at one point. If anybody's used that, come talk to me after. I'll buy you a beer. Um, <laughs> We had a lot of SSR and Haml and kind of old school classic Rails stuff. And we had not many APIs. But we had a vision. We had a place we wanted to go. Um, we wanted more to move application, kind of interface development. We wanted to use Vue. So what we're trying to get to. We wanted to break up the monolith. Uh, we wanted to turn our Rails server into more of an API server. Uh, we wanted to build a whole new Vue front end. Uh, we wanted to do this incrementally, because obviously product's not going to do like a full, let's throw everything in the trash and do a full SPA. Our site is too big for that. We want to still scale quickly, and not just on the tech side, also in the development cycle. We want to get developers who might be more Java developers involved in this project very early on. So here's kind of what we did in order to make that happen. Um, first thing we did is we, we scaled the code. We migrated incrementally. So how did we do that? Um, kind of like I alluded to, we, we started building out a library of core components. Um, we're Bloomberg, so we build everything in-house. So we start with buttons and autocompletes and things like that. Um, next thing you know, we're building trees, and we're building modals, and we're building kind of this core set of things that our application needed, um, which was great. We learned a lot of things along the way. Um, but eventually, you kind of reach a breaking point of like exporting about, I think at one point, we had like 150 components exporting into the Rails application, and still kind of scaffolding all those big applications on the Rails side. So we moved to building applications on the view kind of side of things. So we, the key thing here that I want to impart on people is if you're taking on this thing is, Make sure at this stage that you come up with a standard way for those applications to be kind of integrated. Because um, we got a, a lot of pain around five or six different ways, kind of way to instantiate and kind of link your applications back into that server. Um, which would prevent you from doing the last thing we really want to do, is basically deploy our front end kind of independently from the back end. Um, so that's where we're actually right, at right now, is we have this really nice kind of abstracted way for us to build applications in our view repository. Um, and right now, I believe we're looking at pushing those applications live into a CDN, for example, and really kind of completing that bifurcation of the front end and the back end, which is kind of the big goal of this entire endeavor. Um, second thing I want to do is, how do you scale development? How do you scale like, you know, people contributing to something that's new and fresh as you're moving off of your legacy thing into the new thing? And I really want to impart like, setting really high standards. Like, this is a really big opportunity you have from moving away from a legacy app. Um, some things we did that is, Vue has absolutely fantastic documentation. Um, we get a round of applause for the people who write that. That stuff is absolutely awesome. But it doesn't really document your application. Your legacy application has a history, right? You probably have stuff you want to do that's specific to your implementation, your use case, your business. So really take that as an inspiration and write your own. Um, so we spent, actually, at the beginning of this thing, um, a core kind of set of us kind of set out and wrote documentation that you know, any developer who came into our project halfway through would kind of know where we started and know where we were trying to go, um, which we're really paying the fruits for now, and that anybody can kind of jump onto this project with any sort of level of skill background, and they feel comfortable that they contribute from day one. Second thing I want to do, which is kind of a weird one, is we gatekept everything really early on. Um, as much as I'm going to impart on you to say you should write really good documentation, it doesn't really mean anything if nobody reads it. So we wanted to make sure that people were reading it. So we gatekept. We used code owners in GitHub, so we'd get pinged on pull requests. Um, we had kind of community meetings. We'd have a weekly community of practice where if you wanted to come contribute to the Vue application, you had to kind of come share your pains, frustrations, things like that, um, which really worked for us to kind of make sure that the repository was staying up with the standards we kind of set from the outset as we scaled it from five contributors to 10 to 15 to I believe now we're up to about 45 to 50. The last thing is lean on the community. There's a lot of people in this room who are doing really cool stuff. Make sure you're keeping up on it. It can be a challenge. There's a lot going on. And then pull that stuff back into your own kind of development workflow. Um, that's something that I think we've been looking at a lot recently. We were actually just having a discussion at lunch about using the Vue 3.0 transition to migrate our repository to 2.0 with RFCs and all that kind of beautiful stuff. Um, so definitely, I would, I would definitely hit on that. Um, 
And the last thing I want to highlight in this talk is make it fun. Fix your problems. Who here works in an open office? Probably most people, right? How often do you hear things like this? It's probably not that you, they don't hate writing CSS, they hate writing your CSS. Own that problem, right? So this is a com common problem we had. We had a lot of people who were full stack who probably scaled more, or focused more on the kind of server side of things. And what they didn't hate was writing CSS, they read it hating writing R3 design systems old, uh, SCSS less, all everything slammed together CSS, right? So what we did is we fixed that. We came up with our kind of own proprietary implementation we're calling CSS guardrails. It's a weird kind of mix of CSS and JS styled components, all this kind of stuff. But people like it. Um, it really works for us. It allows people to kind of increment quickly, move fast. Um, so this is just an example. I'm sure you guys all know that if you're on a legacy application, there's lots of pain points. If you're gonna migrate, use this as a huge opportunity to fix some of those pain points. Um, and this is a real quote I got from somebody who writes Java 90% of the time, view is really easy. Which I think means that we really set this up in a way that anybody can contribute to of all skill levels. Um, and just these are some patterns that we learned along the way. Um, that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Um, hope you guys all learned a lot.